work with you, O oh God, yes, God, in this time and in this season. Yes, so, Father, we surrender to you this morning. We surrender. Yes, God. We surrender. Yes, We surrender. Come on, lift your hands and begin to surrender in this house. We surrender to you. We surrender to you. We surrender to you. We surrender our mind. Every thought, God, we surrender to you. We surrender. We surrender, Lord. And we say, come and have your way. Come and have your way. We cannot do this by ourselves. We cannot be successful by ourselves. We cannot overcome this giant by ourselves. We cannot overcome this battle by ourselves. But we know with you, all things are possible. So this morning we surrender to you, oh God. And we say, come and take over this morning. Come and take over. 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 Our friend that she get closer than a brother. Our father, our defender, our source, our help, our sustainer. Come and take over. Come and take over. Come and take over before we were. You were here. You know this world. You know the world that we are living in. You are the spirit that was here before us. You understand the system. You understand how to maneuver in the system. And in order for us to be successful, we need your help because you know the system and you know how to move in the system. You know what to do, when to do it. You know what to say, when to say it. You know when to say and when to shut up. You know, God, help us, oh, Father. We surrender. We even give our tongues to you. We give our minds to you. We ask you, oh, God, for your help, oh, Father. So we surrender to you this morning. Come and breathe afresh. Breathe afresh. Breathe afresh. Breathe afresh. Breathe afresh. Your word over us uh, is our true season. Breathe afresh. Uh, breathe afresh. We need to miss, we need not miss anything in our true season. Give us fresh eyes. Give us fresh ears. Give us fresh understanding. Give us wisdom. Give us knowledge, oh God, so that we can get everything that we need to get in this season and in this time. We surrender to you, God. And we say, let your will be done. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give God praise this morning? Hallelujah. 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 We're at day five. And how are we feeling? <laughs> we must be feeling excellent, actually. <laughs> um, it's good to be in the house of God. You can have your seats. The number five signifies grace and uh, give me one second it is only fitting for us to discuss and to enter into what God desires for us with grace this morning for the next couple of days and I will permit um I will ask apostle and prophetess for us to stay on this topic for a couple of days we're going to be talking about generational influences. And um, we're going to look at both at blessings and curses because we know that influence is not just good, but it's also the bad influences. And everything that we do in our life here on earth, there is a rippling effect from what our ancestors did. And in order for us to tap into the blessings that God has prepared for us, we need an understanding. So our generational influences, they have the ability to bring about blessings and curses to our life. And our understanding of this reality will not only change our life, but will change the trajectory 
of our family members, of our, of our descendants, et cetera. And we have to know that God operates from a place of legacy in everything that he does. So when we look at generational influences, God does not just deal with you as a person, but when he sees you, he looks back into your history and then he looks forward into your descendants. And it's important for us to consider that the influences who that are impacting, that are dictating how we fulfill our destiny, how we fulfill our purpose, we must be able to identify which are blessings and which are curses this morning. And we look at Genesis, if we can look at Genesis 22, 17, 18, one of the reasons that I love Abraham is that the promise that was given to Abraham was not just about him or his son Isaac, but it was about his descendants. It was about uh, the future generations until Christ's arrival and even now. So if we look, about, if we look at generational blessings, uh, we can look in the scripture, Genesis 22, 17 and 18. And even if we examine the entire promise that God gave to Abraham, that there are many generational blessings that are still activated and ready that we need to tap into. If we look also in Deuteronomy 20, this is actually one of my favorite scriptures because this is a prophetic word that God gave to the Israelites before they entered into the land of of Canaan. And we see in Deuteronomy 28 here that God gave the Israelites two choices. He said, if you obey, this is what will happen. These are the blessings that you will enter into. If you do not obey, these are the curses that will come upon you. And we must understand that when we deal with generational influences, just as the natural realm has a law of court and it has, and it has laws, uh, the heavens have spiritual laws. So what the enemy does is that he goes through our lineage and he looks, he understands the spiritual laws. He understands uh, what God, what, what God means when the judgment should come. He knows why we enter into blessings, why curses are lighted upon a life. He understands all these things. So when the accuser of the brethren goes into the court of heaven, he looks at our lineage and he looks for anything that binds us to a curse. Right? So Deuteronomy 28, I know we don't have the time, but Deuteronomy 28, if you read all the way, I think it's the verse 56, you will see the blessings that we enter into. And we know the top part. We're blessed in the city, blessed when we go, we're the head and not the tail. We know that part. But when we reach down to verse 15, God says that uh, if you do not follow my commandments, and every one of us here, we battle in our, as, we, as we're fulfilling destiny, we battle against the generational influences and that determines if we fulfill promise. Many of the things that we see operating in our life, our attitude, our behaviors, the lifestyles that we carry, the way that our children operate, the kind of partners that we connect to, it is all dependent upon the generational influence. And we need to come into a place and stand in our authority because... Uh, we cannot allow generational curses to continue. That cycle has to be broken. And there's a reason that God has chosen you, chosen you, chosen me to stand and to understand and to come into a place of enlightenment so that we do not have our, our descendants doomed for generational curses and so forth, but we operate in the realm of the blessing. Somebody say blessing. So we must ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten us uh, to the specific generation of blessings in our legion, our, in our lineage, so we do not misuse or abuse them. Many of us here, the only thing that we can see in our lineage or our history is negative, because what the enemy has done is that he has caused so much negative things. See, the covenants and the demonic covenants that are that are operating in our generation they are so much greater that we cannot even see the blessings that god has prepared for us 
So we need to ask ourselves, and I want us to spend the next couple of days uh, that asking the Holy Spirit to enlighten us to the special talents, the uniqueness, the gifts that God has deposited in our family. If we look in Genesis 22, God was very specific about what he said to Abram. He said, I will make your name great. The scripture goes on to say, I just... I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep when I started reading this thing. So it says, blessing, I will bless you. Multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. So God was saying that there will be no end to your legacy. That's what he was saying to Abraham. He, was, he said to him also that as the sand which is on the seashore. So God was telling him that if you follow after me, if you walk in according to my command, that there will be continuity. So if you continue in this path, then you will see the fruition of this work. It says that, and your descendants, he didn't say Abraham, you know. He said, because of your actions and your faithfulness and the staying true to the commandments, that your descendants shall possess the gate of your enemies. And in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. So we see what happens when we are obedient. We enter into the blessing. But unfortunately, our ancestors, they operated in the spirit of occultism and they were idolaters and they did not follow the, the commandments that God gave them, whether they knew it or not. But the reason that God has called us and he has enlightened us is that we can stand in the gap now and come to a place of forgiveness and repentance so that his blood could annul every single thing that our ancestor did and free us so that our descendants could be free. Right, So we must take the blessings uh, that God has deposited in us, uh, we must steward them, meaning that we got to understand and we got to protect them. So if God has anointed your lineage with a Levite anointing, uh, then you have to en ensure that you understand that, you steward that, uh, and make sure that there is no contamination of that. So we must guard them, pass them on to our children and grandchildren. But I don't want to talk about blessings as yet. Uh, let's talk about generational curses and iniquities. So a generational curse is a curse that is passed down from one generation to the next. That means you see a cycle. That means if your grandfather used to abuse alcohol, your son or you probably are, are, are abusing alcohol, your children are abusing alcohol. And what happens is that the enemy tries to mask this thing in a way that it manifests itself in a different way. So for example, if your grandfather used to interfere with uh, women in the village, you might find that at this generation here, all the women were abused. And at the next, at, at the next generation, the spirit of perversion is arising because that's what it opens up to. So we may not see the full manifestation um, generation to generation, but we will see different forms. Of, because what we need to understand is that demonic spirits are like shifters and they, they mask and familiar spirits are like shifters. So they, they manifest themselves in different ways in every generation. I'm coming to something, I'm building my case. So, so for example, if there are chains of sin that we we that we are, we have inherited rather from our parents and grandparents. And don't say, don't sit and say, no, it's not me, because we operate in these realms because we do not know certain attitudes, certain behaviors. Like you would see uh, um, uh, uh, women in the family, either they have been married or um, they have been divorced, or no marriages last for longer than five years. Uh, or only girl children are born in the generation. All of those things are, are generational curses. And it has to do with the sacrifices and the different demonic covenants that uh, the ancestors have made concerning you and your descendants, right? So these chains of sin bind us and keep us from living the life that God has for us. So like I said earlier, that... Uh, the enemy knows all these spiritual laws and stuff, you know. He's a good liar. He's a good liar. He's a good liar. 
But how many of you know uh, that even he might be the best lawyer that there is, uh, but the blood of Jesus annuls everything. You see, when he comes into the court of heaven and he starts to accuse, once we come into a place of repentance and forgiveness, what we activate is the blood that Jesus shed on the mercy seat. And that atones for every single thing that our ancestors have done. If we look at Exodus 24, 6, uh, and God is a just God, so that, that means that we cannot expect him not to rule all the consequence. Uh, he's a God that is just. Uh, and Exodus 24 to 6 says uh, that you shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above uh, or on the earth beneath uh, or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. And I know you guys are probably thinking this is some idol that is made and you have it in the house and you're worshiping that. But people worship other things. They worship money. They worship education. They worship so many other things. And these idols now take the place of God and it, oper and, and it begins to operate in the spirit of occultism. And what you find is that just as we are socialized to uh, operate in the prophetic and understand these things with God, etc., these things can be passed down even as we're socializing our children. So the Bible says that you shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Jealous God. So that means that if anything comes between you and God, God has to step in and he has to do something about it. And he says, punishing the children for the sin of the parents. So many of us are sitting here or going through stuff. We have encountered the punishment, not because of anything that we have done, but because of what our forefathers have done. So punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations. So as much as God wants to, out, he wants to outpour his judgment, he is still a just God that loves us, loves us. This is why he would ensure that we come into a place of enlightenment so we become aware, so that we can be the ones that break the curse so that we can activate verse six, which says, but showing love, to a thousand generations. So his punishment may be for three to four generations. But if you walk in the blessing and in the commandments that he has ordained, he will show this love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. So it's important for us to understand and to break generational curses from over our lives because there are barriers to fulfilling our destiny. And even now, as you're listening to my voice, uh, I know that the Holy Spirit is showing you stuff. Uh, the enemy is the accuser of the brethren. Uh, he is knowledgeable of every single spiritual law. So that means that at a certain time of your life, uh, he knows because of the covenant that was made, whether it was 100, 200 years ago. And we know that we come from occult back backgrounds. We, 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 can't, we can't discuss it. We don't have to debate this. We know who our forefathers are. Our history tell us that they worship the moon, the sun, all of these things. They worshiped demonic spirits and all. However, they were manifested in, they worshiped that. They worshiped it. So therefore, covenants were made. And if you, know, if you watch a lot of um, African movies or so, you would see that even when they start to do their in, um, incantations and all these things, uh, that they normally speak into the generation or they activate ancestral spirits. Uh, you know, a couple, a couple um, months ago, an individual messaged me on um, Instagram. And she was said, oh, um, you shouldn't be talking about manifest this and manifest that and manifest that. But, you know, I always ready for these people with the word of God. And the Bible speaks about that we must speak a thing and what? It shall be established. So if I'm manifesting that this week, I'm, I'm speaking it my, with my mouth that these things must manifest in my life, then it has to manifest because I'm speaking with authority. 
But what the Holy Spirit showed me is that on social media and all of these things, you would see different posts about people talking about the universe. Y'all notice that? Talking about the universe and the universe will bring this to me and the universe will do all these things to me and karma and all this kind of stuff. But what we do not know is that the enemy is subtly breaking through social media and all of these forms uh, and he's bringing these and he's bringing our young people into a form of worshiping the stars uh, and worshiping the universe uh, and making us believe as if God is not the one that is the supreme being right so the enemy he is knowledgeable of every spiritual law so he knows that at the third generation uh, that the third child or the fourth child has to die because of a covenant that was made um, five generations ago. He knows that. He has his book. Just as, just as God has a book and everything about us, he got the book too, you know. He got the book. And he writes down and he knows that. And he has actually, he has demonic um, cohorts uh, that monitor our timeline. So he knows that at a certain point, uh, I got to ensure that all the money in this, uh, in this woman's life or this man's life dries up because of a sacrifice that was done before, right? I'm building my case. So he seeks, our, he seeks in our lineage those covenants of sin and iniquity that legally binds us to curses. Iniquity is defined as the act of being bent towards a certain sin. And the iniquity of a parent is passed on to the children to the third and fourth generation. Hence, why we would see a manifestation of certain behaviors, attitudes, and inclinations to certain lifestyles, generation after generation. If you look at Deuteronomy 28, 15 to 68, it highlights, I want you to look at that verse when you go home, 53 generational curses. And this is because we have not walked in the commandment that God has made. 53, we see poverty, hereditary disease, divorce, child abuse, sexual abuse, domestic violence, alcoholism, drug addiction, immorality, adultery, perversion, depression, confusion, fear, indecision, panic attacks, mental illness, suicide, destructive attitudes and behaviors. All of those things are outlined. And we want to know sometimes why it is that we feel stuck. What are some of the signs that a generational curse is manifesting in our life? Because we might be oblivious to what is happening. We might be in a state of continued hopelessness or despair. And that is manifested in depression or mental illness in our life. We may be in a, a sense of being trapped or stuck in, in life. So that means that you may have highs and lows. Your life is like a roller coaster. You, 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 sometimes at a certain point of the year, you know that you're a high, everything is working. And soon as you enter into August or September, money not working, margin disarray, your mind in disarray. And this is something that is happening year after year after year, season after season. It doesn't matter how much prophetic word you get, how much deliverance you get, because the curse is lighted upon your life and it has not been broken, you will be in this state. A feeling that no matter what you do, you can't break free from the cycle of sin. So you might be doing everything, fasting, praying, all of these things. But because you have not identified and dealt with the curse that is upon your life, there is no total emancipation from it. You may have repeated failures in relationships, career or finances. You keep being connected to a man that's abusing you and doing all these things. It may not just be you. It may be the curse that is upon your life or upon your lineage. You may see patterns of addiction, bondage, or destructive behaviors in your family. You don't know why. You can't understand why. But all of these are signs of generational curses. You may see patterns of sinful behavior in your children that seems impossible to break. Your children might be operating in a spirit of severe rebellion and disobedience. And it doesn't matter what you do, how much you pray, they still operate in this sinful behavior. You may have a feeling of being cursed or, discrimi or discriminated against. You may operate in a way of feeling of constant rejection or abandonment. 
all of these things are signs of generational curses operating in our life. But you know that Hebrews 9.22 says, according to the law, almost all things are purified with the blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. So it, that means, in other words, that in order for us to deal with generational curses, we have to understand that general, generational curses come through the bloodline and they can only be canceled by the blood. And if we look back into our history, there's a reason that witches and warlocks and, and our ancestors, every time they did a covenant is with what? Tell me, blood, blood, because that seals it. That seals the covenant. And the only way that it can be broken and it can, we can be broken free from a generational curse is by the blood. Not no llama, not no goat blood, none of these blood. The only blood that has the power to break a covenant and a curse once and for all is the blood of Jesus. And we have to apply that blood. So when we know, you know, some people casually use the word, oh, the blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. But if we use it with the power and the authority that that blood has, then we would live a free life. So whether I want you guys from now on, when you say the blood of Jesus, understand that it is the blood that is upon the mercy seat that sanctifies, redeems us, makes us whole, and frees us. How do we break free from a generational curse? And that's what I want to get to this morning. We need to break free from a generational curse by first prayer and fasting. The Bible says in Matthew 17, 21, Jesus said that this kind of thing does not go out except by praying and fasting. Why? Because when we subject ourselves, our natural our flesh to the spirit of God, then the spirit is able to reveal to us those things that are not known. And we come into a place where we are just alone with God so he could perform some things in us. He could show us. Uh, he could enlighten us. Uh, he could tell us that these are the things that need to be fixed in our life. Uh, two, binding and loosing. The Bible says in Matthew 16 and 19 uh, that he has given us uh, the keys, uh, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. So whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever we loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Why do we need to bind we need to bind because when we bind things, uh, we erect spiritual embargoes which forbid the operation of curses in our life. Uh, why do we need to loose? Uh, because we need to loose ourselves uh, from the chains of sin uh, that hold us, that keep us uh, from living in the emancipation that God has given to us. Number three, confession and repentance. Uh, I know you might say, but I didn't do anything. You might say, but it's not me, it's my grandfather. Used to have a cow in the yard and they're always sacrificing some cow when it's my bread. It wasn't me, right? But the point that, and the point is why God has chosen us and why he has enlightened us, I gotta say it, it's because he knows that because we have this understanding, we can now stand in the gap. And when we stand in the gap, we not only stand in the gap for ourselves, but we stand in the gap for those to come and even our ancestors. And we confess and we repent, making it known that we will not continue in this sense of iniquity. James 5, 16 says that we must confess our sins to each other and pray so that we may be healed. And we know that the prayer of a righteous person is what? Good. So generational curses cannot be broken without confession and repentance. If we are going to embark upon this, we need the Holy Spirit because he's the only one that can take us back. He's the only one that can take us back. He will show us things. And he will enlighten us things that some things that are, that, that are operating in our families, not tradition, you know. What happens is that our elders are trying to ensure that whatever they would have sacrificed and covenanted for in the earlier years, that it's continued down the generational line. Right? Number four, we must renounce the curse and the sin. We're going to make some declarations just now. Renouncing the curse 
means rejecting it and declaring it impotent. We got to speak this out loud. So if we renounce the curse of alcoholism, of perversion, of sexual immor immorality, we cannot be shy and say, oh, I'm ashamed of this because the enemy will use that against us. But we have to be confident. We have to be bold enough to say that I am renouncing this curse, this spirit of adultery that is operating in my life, this spirit of, 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 of getting children out of wedlock, um, I'm renouncing and declaring that I'm no longer under the curse of generational sin. We got to renounce the sin. That means that we turn away from it and we reject it as part of our lives. We repent of the sin. We ask God to forgive us. And then we break the cycle of sin. It's good to renounce, but we have to break it because Sin and iniquity comes like chains wrapped around the generations. That means that we have to make a conscious decision to break the cycle of sin. And we do this by making different choices. That means if you have certain things in your house that grandmother said, you must always keep this in your house. Anywhere you move to, keep this in your house. Put this over your bed. Rub this on your husband. All of these things. We got to do away those things. Oh, y'all think I don't know stuff? I know a lot of stuff. Forgiveness, number five. We have to understand that forgiveness is an important part of breaking free from generational curses. That means that we have to forgive those who have hurt us in order to be set free from the pain that they have caused us. So many of us don't know why we were treated by the black sheep in the family, but we got to understand that because of your star that God had given to you, the ancestors and your elders had to make sure that you do not shine so certain wealth could be maintained in the family. Six, we must cut demonic influence and break soul ties. Many of us have soul ties with demonic, I'm even talking about natural stuff. I'm talking about spiritual stuff. Many of us, we sleep in the night and because of the, the demonic covenants that our ancestors and elders have made, many spirits run in on us. I'm gonna break that down for y'all. Our marriage has got a lot of problem because incubus and succubus doing this stuff. We got children in the realms of the spirit and all of these things are happening because of the soul ties that were made, it's not, we didn't even make the soul ties, but because of what was spoken negatively into the generation, even before we came into the earth, we already had a spirit, a demonic spirit assigned to us, but we got to break that. So, so ties is not just only with spirit, with people and spirits, it's with objects. They got different objects that, that have been passed down, certain heirlooms, chains, necklaces, all of these things are demonic soul ties that keep us associated with a generational curse. So we got to cut off the demonic influences by removing anything on our lives that continue to give the enemy a foothold. Because he will use that. He will use that. It doesn't matter if you know or not. He ain't got time with them. He just know he need another soul to carry with him when he got to go to hell. Right? And number seven, we need to read the Bible and claim our inheritance. That's why I started with Abraham in Genesis 22. God spoke to him. He knew Abraham's family, they were idolaters, you know. They worship, they worship, they worship all kinds of things. But God had to show himself true. He had to show himself true. He had to show himself true. So that Abraham could be moved from a place of worshiping idols and come into the fullness of living perfectly and right with God. So we need to read the Bible and claim our inheritance. Deuteronomy 30, 15 and 19 says, See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. And you know what he said? You know what God said in the scripture? He said, I call upon heaven and earth to witness today. So when he made this pronouncement, everything was watching. Everything was at standstill. Everything heard his voice. 
this is good and bad, you know. Because he gave a choice to the Israelites. He said, I have witnesses today. Who do you think is the witness? Just the angels? No. It wasn't just the angels. It was Satan and his cohorts too. Because he knew that he knows that they understand spiritual laws. And he says, I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life so that both you and your descendants may live. I want us to stand this morning. I know I've said a mouthful, but uh, I am not allowing no generational curse to stop me. It's one thing to say that you're unstoppable. But you got to do some things. You got to become a, a warrior, a radical woman, a radical man. And stand in the authority and break the curses that are operating. Life. Come on, there are certain things that God has shown you in your family. Some of us, our family is so religious. The reason that many of us cannot step into the fullness of, of what God has prepared for us is because the, the spirit of religion has us in a chokehold. You know, we, we, it's okay if we worship God. It, 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 it is okay if we do all these things. But, he's not, but the enemy will not allow us to jump into that next level because he knows what. He knows, he knows the curses that are over our life. So this morning, I want you to begin to think, Holy Spirit, open up our eyes to see. Many of us, we're getting a lot of revelation this morning. I want you to think this morning. Think, 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 think about your family. Think about the systems, the culture, the tradition, the customs, the words that have been spoken. Think about the cycles that have been operating in your life. I want you to think this morning. Think, 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 think. Let the Holy Spirit bring to light insight. Bring to light this morning everything that the enemy has hidden. Everything that the enemy has masked as normal in your life. It is not normal. It's not normal. It's not normal. It's not normal. It's not normal. He's just ensuring that his that the curses that are upon their generation are enforced. Uh, but this morning, God has removed uh, every single every single scale on our eyes so that we can see and identify every schema, every plan, every covenant, every hex, uh, everything uh, that the enemy has used to stop us and to hinder our destiny. Come and begin to open up your mouth this morning. Uh, Begin to open up your, your mouth this morning and, and come into a place of forgiveness and repentance. Uh, many of us know what our grandparents have done, what our forefathers have done. Uh, we know, we, we, we have heard the stories. It's not normal, it's not normal. No, it's not normal. It's not normal. For the lack of knowledge, we perish. But this morning, God has given us fresh knowledge. He has given us insight. He's given us insight this morning so that we can begin to war, not just for our destiny, but for the destiny of our children to come and our children's children and our children's children's children. We have to war for the seed that God has placed on the inside of us. Whatever is the curse, it stops now. It stops now. It's broken now. It's broken now. There is no longer any hindrance. There's no demonic force. Many of us are operating in demonic covenants and we do not know. But this is our day. This is our time. This is our day of being set free. Set free. Set free. Set free. Set free. Many of our children have not been able to prosper in their academics because of the demonic demonic curses but we break them now we break them now we break them now come on stand in the gut this morning and repent 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 for what your mother did for what your grandmother did for what your grandfather did your uncle your great grandmother father we stand in the gut this morning and we repent we repent 
temperature for the change of spin and the cycles of spin that we have continued with, that we did not know. We ask for your forgiveness this morning, oh God, for allowing curses, oh Father, to come into our generation. Oh God, this morning we stand in the gap this morning. We say that we are sorry. We are sorry. We are sorry. We are sorry this morning, oh God. We are sorry. We ask even now, God, that you would forgive. Forgive, forgive, forgive. You know why you created this generation. You know why you created this lineage, this legacy, oh Father. And we will not allow it to be tainted by the work of the enemy. But this morning we stand in a place of repentance and we ask for your mercy. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your mercy where blood was shed. We ask for your mercy where innocent lives were lost. We ask for your mercy, for your mercy, for your mercy that you would deliver, 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 deliver. Deliver, 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 deliver our generation, deliver our legacy from curses of poverty, from curses of poverty, from curses of addiction, immorality, adultery, confusion, depression, fear, indecision. We ask this morning, God, for your forgiveness. God, you know the acts of our ancestors. You know what they have done. You know what they have spoken and echoed into the generation. But we ask for your mercy. We ask for your mercy this morning. We ask for your mercy. We repent of every sin, of every iniquity this morning, oh God. We repent. We repent. We say that we are we have given our children, given our children over to the enemy where we have sacrificed the talents and the gift things and the, and the good things that you have placed in our generation. We say we are sorry this morning, God. We repent. Oh God, we repent. We repent, we repent, for where our ancestors have been idolaters, we repent, where they have worshipped, oh God, the sun, the moon, the stars, the things that you have created, all for wealth, all for power, Father, we repent, this morning we repent, we repent, we ask for your mercy, God. Father, we ask for your forgiveness, God. Mm. We ask for your forgiveness, Jesus. Oh, God, we ask for your forgiveness. We ask for your forgiveness. Your blood is enough. Your blood is enough. Your, bow, your blood is powerful. Your blood is enough to break it all. To break the cycle. To break the curses. To break the words that have been spoken over our generation. Over our marriages. Over our children. Your blood is enough. Your blood is enough. We ask to say that you would apply your blood upon the mercy seat. You would apply your blood upon the mercy seat, oh Father. That you, oh God, this day would free your people, Jesus. Free your people. Free your people this day. Free your people this day. Yaka Santa Rabai in there, baby. Yaka Santo, you bo bo bo. Come on, begin to war. Begin to war. Begin to war. Begin to war. We confess our sins. We confess the sins of our ancestors. We confess them this day. So that, Father, you may see that we desire no longer to walk in the way of our forefathers. But 
now that you have spoken your word, we renounce every curse, we renounce every sinner, and we ask that according to the power that is in the blood, that every demonic cycle in our life is broken, it is shattered, it is not working. We decree and declare that every demonic covenant is annulled in the name of Jesus because of your blood that has been shed. We don't need any other person's blood, but we know your blood is powerful. Your blood is powerful. So we take your blood this day and we smear it across our generational lineage, across our legacy this morning. And we decree and declare that every generational curse is broken, is broken, is broken, is broken this day. This is the last time, this is the last moment, this is the last day that we will stay under the power of any generational curse. This is the last time, the last day we reverse the words that have been echoed, every demonic spirit shouting into our generational line. We muffle you. We shut you up in the realms of the spirit even now. And we decree and declare that your time has ended now. Your words have ended now. And what you have said will backfire upon you seven times, seven times, a hundred times in the name of Jesus. Every legal right of the enemy in our lives, in our generation, in our legacy this day, I decree and declare that because the blood has been applied, there is no longer any legal right, that there is no more accusations in the courts of heaven concerning my destiny, concerning my descendants, concerning the legacy that God has given to me in the name of Jesus. Come on, begin to war. 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 We begin to war. We call upon the angelic hosts. We call upon the angelic hosts this morning uh, that even as we war on behalf uh, of our legacy and our destiny, uh, that Father, those who are with us uh, are more than those who are against us. I decree and declare even now uh, that Father, that you have arisen uh, as the man of war uh, fighting on our behalf uh, and that we stand with you uh, in your army. Uh, to decree and declare that this is our day of deliverance. This is our day of freedom. This is our day of deliverance. This is our day. This is our day. This is our day. Because your light has come. Yes, Your light has come, Yande. Your light has come. Your light has come. So therefore, every darkness, every dark force, every dart, yes, has been destroyed by the power of your light. Come on, somebody, begin to war. Begin to war. The Bible says in Galatians 3 and 13 that we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. And this day we claim our redemption. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I want you to repeat after me these declarations this morning. Say, Father, today I am redeemed from the curse of the law. I break all generational curses of pride, lust, perversion. Hold on, the Holy Spirit just said something. So as we're making these declarations, do not reject their presence in your life, right? Because there are probably things that has not manifested as yet because it's not the appointed time. So don't say it's not me. It's not in my generational line. Right? Just declare it and decree it. Whatever is present, whatever is from the past will be annulled because of our declaration today. Those online are with me? Those online are with me? So say, I break all generational curses of pride, lust, perversion, rebellion, witchcraft, idolatry, poverty, rejection, fear, confusion, addiction, death, and destruction in the name of Jesus. I command all generational spirits. Put your hands on your womb right now. That came into my life during conception. In the womb. In the birth canal. And through the umbilical cord. To come out now. In the name of Jesus. I break all spoken curses and negative words that I have spoken over my life in the name of Jesus. I break all spoken curses and negative words spoken over my life by others, including those in authority in the name of Jesus. Now take some time and renounce those words that have been spoken. Your mother, your father, your husband, uh, your, your, your boss might have spoken negative words over you. Uh, your grandmother, your uncle, uh, your friend, uh, your business partner may have spoken negative words and spoken curses over you that you won't see your way, uh, that you wouldn't prosper, that you'll never get married, uh, that you'll never have children, uh, that you uh, that, that you always have sickness uh, and your money will be finished because of sickness. Uh, come on, break those words, uh, break those words, break those words, break those words uh, off of your life, uh, off of your life, off of your life, uh, even the words that have been spoken by persons in government concerning your race, concerning your ethnicity. Break those words. Break those words. Words that have been spoken because of the community that you've grown up in. Break those words. Break those words. We shatter them even now. We shatter them. We shatter them. We decree and declare that they're no longer hanging over our head. Yes, even the words that you have spoken over yourself, uh, we break them now, we break them now, uh, that you're not good enough, uh, that God could not have called you to this promise. Uh, break those words, break those words, break those words. Uh, we break all the spoken curses uh, over our life. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that they are not, uh, not able uh, to dictate uh, and to influence our lives any longer. We render them impotent uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Say, I command all ancestral spirits of Freemasonry, idolatry, witchcraft, false religion, polygamy, lust, and perversion to come out of my life in the name of Jesus. I command all hereditary spirits of lust, rejection, fear, sickness, infirmity, disease, anger, hatred, confusion, failure, and poverty to come out of my life in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Now hold a moment. Many of us in this room, nothing is wrong with us. But because of spoken curses over our life, when we entered into a certain age, we had hypertension. We had anxiety attacks. We had diabetes. We had cancer scares. We had all of these things. But these are hereditary spirits that are connected to demonic curses. So this morning, I want you to renounce and cast them out and break every curse that is offering many of us operating a severe spirit of anger and hatred that is passed down through the generational line. We don't forgive nobody. We don't care what is. We don't care who said what. I ain't doing this because I am angry and I hate you. So break the spirit of anger and hatred and lust and rejection and sickness and infirmity and disease off of your life. Our children are suffering with different, with different complications, but break Break it off of your life. Break it off of your life. Every spirit of deformity that has come to our seed, we break it off of our life. Every curse of deformity, we break it off of our life. Every curse of mental illness, we break it off of our life. Every curse of mental illness, we break it off of our life. Every curse of insanity, of unstable and double-mindedness, of schizophrenia, we break it off of our life this day. We break every curse that has been lighted upon us concerning confusion. Every spirit of failure that has come. Oh God, every time we embark upon a project, we break the spirit of failure off of our life, on our job, on our marriage, on our business, on our children's education. We break the spirit of failure even now. Come on, break the spirit. Break the spirit of poverty that has come in to the generational line we weed you out we excavate you wherever you are deep in our history we excavate you and we release the fire of God to burn you up 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 this day hallelujah hallelujah you guys give me 10 more minutes I know we're over time 10 more minutes I break the legal rights I break the legal rights of all generational spirits operating behind the curse in the name of Jesus and today I stand in the power and authority and I speak into my generation that you have no legal right to operate in my life. I bind and rebuke every familiar spirit, every spirit guide that is monitoring my life, that came from my ancestors in the name of Jesus. I renounce every false belief, every philosophy inherited by my ancestors that do not align with what your word says concerning me. I break all curses this morning on my finances from my ancestors that cheated or mishandled money. So many of us, our wealth is tied up because what our ancestors did, they cheated and mishandled money. So that's why every time money comes into our hand, it's quickly gone. Because they would have done a, a demonic thing or a disobedient thing to acquire wealth in the past. But this morning, say, I break all curses on my finances from any ancestors that cheated or mishandled money in the name of Jesus. I break every curse of sickness and disease in the mighty name of Jesus. I break all oaths, vows, and pacts made by the devil, by my ancestors in the name of Jesus. I break every written curse 
that would affect my life in the name of Jesus. I break every time release curse that would activate in my life as I grow older in the name of Jesus. I break every generational rebellion that will cause me to resist the Holy Spirit. I break every curse, Balaam Harir, against my life. Father, today, according to Genesis 12 and 3, through Jesus, my family is blessed. Lord, turn every curse spoken against my life into a blessing. I activate this day every generational blessing, every generational blessing, everything that was hidden from me, stolen from me, masked from me. I decree and declare that by your spirit, it is being uncovered, it's being exposed, and it's made available for me. From this day on, I welcome your freedom and I apply your blood to my generational line, to my children, to my family, to my business, to my job. Come on, call the other things that you apply the blood of Jesus to this morning. Come on, apply, apply the blood of Jesus. You know what it is that you have. You know the things, uh, the gifting and the talents uh, that God has given to your generational line. Uh, this morning we decree and declare that the blood of Jesus uh, restores, 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 uh, redeems, redeems, redeems. Uh, that no longer are we bound, uh, but we are free uh, to pursue the things that God has ordained us to. Uh, we are free to walk in it. Uh, we are free to operate in it. Uh, we are free to enjoy it this morning come on come on apply the blood of Jesus uh. apply the blood of Jesus apply the blood of Jesus uh. apply the blood of Jesus this morning hallelujah can we give God glory in this house somebody praise God praise God praise God praise God Praise God, praise God, praise God. Father, we thank you. Uh, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Uh, come on, thank you for what he has done this morning. Uh, thank you for what he has done. Uh, thank you for what he has done. Uh, we thank you, Jesus. Uh, we thank you, Jesus. Father, this morning, uh, even as we have made room in our lives, because of our confessions this day, we welcome your Holy Spirit to come in and to fill up our lives with everything that he is, oh God. We decree and declare that there will be no counterattack, no retaliation, no reassembly. Every conference, every demonic conference that's being held to try to strategize, to entrap us, we break it up even now in the realms of the Spirit. And we decree and declare uh, that God, Yeshua, is fighting on our behalf this morning. Uh, Father, we decree and declare even further that even as we leave this place, uh, that your blood uh, is a hedge from the about us, uh, that the enemy will not be able to retaliate uh, or to entrap us again. Uh, but Father, this day we stand uh, knowing uh, that you have made us victorious, uh, that you have kept us uh, and will continue continue to sustain us this day uh, we ask that you would continue to open up our eyes uh, and show to us uh, and reveal to us uh, those things that we must deal with uh, give us boldness uh, let it not come uh, with fear but give us boldness uh, to be a serious uh, and to be aggressive uh, to deal uh, with those generational curses uh, and those generational spirits that have
have come to seal our destiny in the name of Jesus. As we go forth from here today, I decree and declare that we will have a prosperous day, that we will succeed in all things, that all things are working for our good in the name of Jesus, that Father, every plan of the enemy is destroyed because of the praise that we have lifted up unto you. We thank you, oh God, for what you will continue to do in our life, and we return glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody just give God praise in this house. Come on, lift him up, lift him up. Just for 30 seconds more, lift him up, lift him up. Lift him up, lift him up. For the cycles that he has broken in your life, lift him up, lift him up, lift him up. Lift him up, lift him up, lift him up. Lift him up, lift him up. Because freedom is yours, freedom is yours. Freedom is yours. Freedom is yours. You are not bound. You are not enslaved. You are not held back. But this day God has liberated you for the purpose, for the promise, for the assignment on your life. And you're going forward today as a free woman, as a free man of God. Let the anointing continue to break every yoke. Continue to break every yoke. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You can bring your gifts uh, this morning, your seed. Hold a second, prophetess, want to say something. Why is there, and, and she was praying and going on. The Lord said, everyone in this room, I see two persons left. Please, you know the name, tell them. Put two offerings today. One is for the financial offering that is going to come from the demonic world and your offering that you put. Put it today. I don't care if it's $20 or 100 200 but find two offering and put because God is doing an agreement with the demonic realm and then we're going to see our blessing. We go, some of us are going to experience it before the day out or the week out but you know that it is coming because it was a it was a realm that she was in that the Lord just do a work uh, and the demonic was fighting but they could not have prevail uh, because God just had intercession going. People, this is deep. I don't know where y'all come from, but I came from a generation of priesthood where there were large men and all of that. I came from that generation. And you know what? My great grandmother had a sore foot. My grandmother had a sore foot. My mother had a sore foot. And guess who come on? Me, but in the name of Jesus, it is broken, destroyer, cancel, and render powerless in Jesus name what the evidence here and everybody is with their left foot but it is broken it is destroyed it is cancelled in Jesus name you will see this foot healer and God is going to do it and it's not going anywhere else to my generation it's prohibited it's disallowed it's cancelled and it's rendered ineffective in Jesus mighty name so today put your double offering and watch God. Watch God. Hallelujah. You heard my prophet has said, put your offering this morning. Your double offering. Your double offering. Your double offering. Your double offering. Yes, prophetess. How many of you, you remember that it's our due season? Tell your name, it's your juice season. It's your juice season. Tell them again, it's your juice season. So whatever it is that God has for you, as you give this morning, I prophesy that there is an acceleration to everything that God has made due to you in this season. Whatever it is, if it's your healing, if it's restoration, whatever it is, we decree and declare acceleration. Let it come with the angels. Let it come with the angels. Let it come with the angels. Let it come with the angels this morning. Let it come with the angels. Whatever it is that is due to us in this time, in this day, in this week, in this month, 
2022 is not over and we decree and declare that as it is due it is coming it is accelerated and it's coming this morning your healing your healing your healing your restoration it is coming 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 we claim it now we claim it now Father, as we give today, uh, we decree and declare that our seed is bringing forth fruit. It's bringing forth flourishing. It's bringing forth multiplication. It is bringing to pass the promises that you have prophesied over our life, over our life, over our life. Whatever it is that we need, whatever it is that we need, we activate Jehovah Jireh even now. And let there be a release from the kingdom of abundance into our life, into our life. Somebody just stretch forth your hands and claim it now whatever it is uh, claim it now your healing uh, your financial increase your health uh, your restoration your mind uh, your marriage restored uh, your business flourishing uh, I call clients into your business uh, I call customers into your business uh, that you will no longer see a dry season uh, but now 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 uh, you will be overtaken uh, by orders and clients and customers uh, in the name of Jesus uh, I call Call them forth from the north, south, east, and west. Uh, I decree and declare that financial blessings uh, have been ushered into your life. Uh, that your name will be remembered. Uh, your name will be on the lips uh, of your destiny helpers. Uh, your name will be on the lips uh, of your destiny helpers. Uh, that your hand uh, will find many things to do with it. Uh, because in this season, uh, God uh, has accelerated your blessing. Uh, in the name of Jesus so father we seal these things with your blood we seal these things with your blood we seal these things with your blood we seal our lives we seal our destinies we seal the seed and what you have incubated on the inside of us we seal it this day and we give you praise can we just give God praise can we give God praise I see angels dispatched. Since yesterday, I saw angels dispatched. I saw angels dispatched. Even where apostle and prophetess are, I saw angels dispatched. I saw angels dispatched. Wherever we go, whatever we do, the angels of the Lord are with us. They are encamped round about us. The enemy cannot find us. I see angels dispatched and they're on assignment. Whenever you need help today, just call upon your angels and call upon the Spirit of God. Whenever you need help today, call upon your angels and call upon the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. I would like you to listen very carefully. We all have received from Prophetess Nisa. You know, the other day I had a dream about Prophetess Nisa, which I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it. I told her already, and there is such a grace upon her life. And often time when I talk to her, I tell her she feels as though because she is small, that the weight of this grace that is upon her, that it's impossible to do. But like this morning, I said, when God speaks something to you, he don't expect you to do it. He expects you to come to him for him to help you to do it. So this morning, as she has given out to you, I want we all together in this house begin to pray that that which God has placed on the inside of her will begin to break forth. It's already started. It's already started. And like I said to her, oftentimes the place that God is taking her, there is no one 
There is no one that has ever been there. So you have nobody to look at, to see how you can do this. You have to depend on the Holy Spirit. Come on, Minister Natasha. Let us pray for Nisa this morning. Come on, lift your tongues and begin to pray. Fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire. 
baba sikata mai na baba bokula baba rebe god give her the grace to carry this anointed that you have received give her the grace to carry the anointing father we seal her life with your blood we seal her transportation with your blood we cut off incident accident satan let me tell you something today if you think today because what god has done that you are coming we stand in authority we stand with michael and the archangel and the whole house of heaven and we said send your guard to cover we draw a bloodline around everything concerning our, our finance our marriage our children some of you say she'll get children but we decree and we declare you will not touch nothing concerning her nothing concerning her because of the assignment that god has released over your life father today we seal a life with your blood we throw a blood blanket over her and we decree and we declare you are protected daughter of zion you are covered daughter of zion you are eyed under the pavilion daughter of zion and father we seal a life with your blood Father, we even pray for prophetess uh, and apostle right now. Uh, we pray for the entire family. Father, where the enemy, because the enemy is subtle. We come against every plan, uh, every plot uh, of the enemy. We decree uh, and we declare uh, you will not creep in. You will not sleep in. We cover Jeremy. Uh, we cover Christiana. Uh, we cover Nikita. We cover Tehila, Rebata, the cat, the dog. We cover everything concerning this family and we decree and we declare no weapon formed against them shall prosper and every tongue that rise up in judgment is already condemned so father we seal our lives with your blood we come against every attack every counter attack every retaliation spirit every marauding spirit we shut you down even now in the name of jesus and we thank you, God, for what you're about to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, lift your voice and begin to praise the name of the Lord. Let us seal this prayer with a praise. Come on, let us seal it with a praise. Let us seal it with a praise. It must come to pass. She has to finish what God said she has started. What God has started in her, she has to finish it. So, Father, we praise you for the finishing grace. You said Zerubbabel that began to build the temple will finish it. He said it not by might not by power but by your spirit we declare that she is fortified no devil in hell no infant no plan of the enemy in the atmosphere in the sea on land will stop what you will do in a life in the name of Jesus and father we thank you oh god you are mighty you are too much you are too much come on lift your voice and begin to praise him lift your voice and begin to praise him lift your voice and begin to praise him when you praise him on her behalf he will work it out for you praise him for her praise him praise him come on praise him let your praise Go forth for her in battle in the name of Jesus. We give you glory. We give you honor. You are a too much God. You are a too much God. Your word said, either keep it Israel, neither slumber nor sleep. Keep them, oh God. Keep this family, oh God. Keep the sober family, oh God. Keep them, oh God. Keep them on every side, Jesus. And we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. And we thank you 
for what you're going to do going forward in Jesus name put your hands above your head clap your hands unto the Lord and give him all the praise all the glory all the honor let your will be done in the earth as it is in heaven we thank you everyone for coming out we thank you for coming morning everyone please be reminded that our food drive is still on for the 17th we're packing on the 14th yes um so we're expecting your gifts the barrel is still there every time we meet which will be every day onwards you can throw your stuff in there or if listen just a little advice what we have also done in the past we have pulled together so if you decide you know you can't afford to bring milk for everybody you want to buy that you put your fellow um sisters and brothers maybe you can come together buy a whole box you know a whole box of milk or you all buy all the flour or all the macaroni all the sausages come on let's make this thing happen yes so we're looking forward to your donations and your gifts so we can go out and bless these people all right <laughs>